So, you're looking at the mouse mat now thinking, what happened? Uh, you can probably see it all here. All of that. Yeah, so, I was using super glue earlier. This mat is cursed. I've spilt ice cream on it, drinks, all sorts of shit. And I was trying to fix something, had super glue, and nothing was coming out. So I poked the tip with a screwdriver, and nothing was coming out. So I was like, I held it up, and I squeezed on it, and all of a sudden it just f***ing went. And it went everywhere. Luckily, it didn't hit my new monitor, so I'm very lucky. It got to the end of the mouse mat, and that's it. So, in a fit of panic, I, uh, I bought three mouse pads, so in case one gets a stain on it, then I have the other one, and then I have another one as a backup. This one has a different design on it, but I have a feeling that the camera will only have gam, and it just looks silly, so I have the exact same ones, just here, see? Exact same ones. One sealed and one isn't. You're gonna go in the bin? Off. I bet if I never told anyone, no one would have noticed. Oh, this one's nice and clean now. <laughs> Greetings everyone and welcome to another installment in the Phone Archive, a series in which I look at weird, strange, stupid and obscure phones from all over the globe for your entertainment. And today, today my friends, we are going to be looking at one out of the five Siphone branded devices that I have. Now you might be familiar with the brand Siphone. They were probably the most popular iPhone clone manufacturer back in the sort of late 2000s. They did go up to iPhone 4, but I'm not too sure if they continued on to iPhone 5 or not. But I have five iPhone 3G and 3GS clones that are Siphone branded, but I didn't know which one to start off with first. So what I did, was randomly sorted them out, and I've got them in some random order, and I've got this one to look at today. I've had a brief look at it. It has games installed. We're going to be going through this again. God help me. So this luxurious piece of technology is the Siphone i9++ plus 2008 model, which would be a 3G clone. However, it's actually a 2G clone just with an iPhone 3G back, that's all. But this is it here. It's very plain. It's got a pretty scratched up plastic resistive touchscreen as we've all come to know and love. It is about a 3.3 inch display, maybe a 3.2, could be pushing it there. But earpiece at the top, home button there, and plasticky build, and then you see the side where we don't have a mute button or mute switch as it should be called. We just have the volume rockers there, that's it. Uh, at the top of the device, we don't have anything. There is a hole there, but I didn't make that. I promise. Uh, there's no lock button at the top, nothing. Uh, the side, nothing. At the bottom is our 12 pin proprietary connector. Welcome back, friend. I missed you. Not really. So we have two speaker grills at the bottom of the device, but they serve no purpose apart from decoration because the only speaker that's inside of this unit is up the top here. No dual speakers or anything fancy like that. This is just no-nonsense bullcrap. So, on the back, we see it is just called Phone. 16 gigabytes. It's designed by Typhone in America, assembled in China, model number A1221, with FCC regulations and all that good stuff, which doesn't really mean much to this device. There's a hole for a stylus just here, but my one's missing. It's present on the other ones, but... Yeah, we don't really need it. I've got my Apple Pencil to use. We've got a 0.3 megapixel shooter at the top here, which probably produced the worst photos I've taken out of this whole entire series, I think. I could be wrong. I'll let you guys decide that. That's it. Very plain. Only buttons, home button, and volume buttons. That's it. Very reminiscent of the iPhone 2G clones. And a quick comparison between the clone and the real deal. Obviously, you can see the differences there. No sensors at the top of the clone. Obviously, we have the sensors at the top of the real deal. Home button placement is a little bit off, as well as, obviously, the screen size, as we touched on earlier. The sides of the device are significantly different because we don't have the mute switch and the volume rockers are moved down on the real deal, but they're just up here on the clone. At the top, there's a big difference, obviously. We have no headphone jack, once again, sides. They're about the same thickness as well, to be honest. Maybe the Siphone might be a little bit thicker, but not by much. And then the bottom there... They've got the speaker grills kind of in the right location. 
kind of, but that's basically it between the real deal and the clone because you can open this up. Okay, taking the back cover off like so. Nothing special about it. Something rattling around. I've used the golden battery. This thing is the only battery that fits in this one and keeps charge. You've seen this before. This was on uh, one of the iPhone 2G clones. Can't remember which one. It's only 1,000 milliamp hours. But inside we can see it is the Siphone model i9 plus plus plus. Quad band cell phone with the dual IMEIs. Manufacturer is Siphone Incorporated. Designed in USA. Made in China. That's kind of a lie. You've ripped off the original design that was designed in the USA and was put together in China. So, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to fight over politics. It's fine. We've got a little crappy camera at the top there. I believe it's a 0 0.3 megapixel one. As for the dual SIM area, it's kind of like this just stacked on design. You got one SIM slot and then on top of that's another SIM slot. So I'll just stick a SIM card in the bottom slot. Got some shiny holographic stickers in there, and our memory card is a 512 meg one, preloaded in here, ready to go. So that is it. So let's go ahead and start having a look at the Psi phone model, i9 plus 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 2008, because the next one I have is a 2009 one. Battery in, back case on, that's good enough. So you may remember this issue on the iPhone 2G clone. How do you power this thing on? You hold the home button, that's it. Just hold the home button and it will turn on. See? It's not even an animation. Actually, why is that in the... what? Okay. Sure. So, here it is. Boot it up. Brilliant. Fantastic. The touchscreen barely works. It vibrates every time you touch the display. I have no way of switching that off, so it's fine. Uh, Button-wise, the home button will lock the device. The home button will power off the device. The power button also probably does something else. Uh, double click. Oh, it just locks it as well. And the volume buttons, pretty much like the 2G clone, I think they're used for navigating through the menus. Uh, yeah, pretty much. The previous iPhone 3G clone I had a look at had a decent OS. This is back to the bare bones 2G OS. It's the really crappy one. We've got five pages. Got a couple of games. So let's go through it, explore the endless possibilities of the Siphone, and we'll dedicate a chunk of this video to games. And I just realized it says slide unlock. And why did it lock after 10 seconds? Okay, so we have SMS, calendar, photos, camera, video, put, QQ, voice, mm, call list, time, calculate, setting, games, call, phone, book, network, audio, put, I love these names, FM, Bluetooth, user, per, rec, file, map. Map, one iron, cool. Web, lottery, okay, sure. Stock, book shit, multimit. Oh, don't lock, man. Organize, chat, profile, voice, m study. I may have to blow that or else I might get demonetized. Secure it. If that's security, why does it show a golf course there? Okay, mobile, something. City, map, media, put, magic, soot. Oh, I know that's magic sushi. Color, soot, NES games. I think. I'll stop locking. That's going to bug me throughout this whole review. Uh, news something. Tank racing hundo motor... Let's just say it's motorcycle. And super... Hmm. And that's it. So hopefully this review won't go for too long. I'm just going to have to touch the screen in case it locks again uh, while I talk. So hopefully we don't have that many applications to go through. I'll try to be as quick as I can throughout this review. But yeah, obviously we'll go through... <sighs> Doesn't matter what I do. It just locks. I'm going to have to go through settings quickly and see if I can change that. Hang on. I've changed the auto keypad lock to five minutes. That should solve any issues. Starting from the top, messages. We can't go into messages, but judging by the condition of the device, I would say someone was using it. Trust me, people use these Siphones back in the day. Our calendar looks like Windows ME Minesweeper looking thing. Uh, photos, we can see the storage not ready we may have to check that uh, the internal storage says two megabytes with one meg free I have a lot of storage here uh, let me fix that SD card issue slide power off done I was trying to get the back cover off and I instead just like pulled up half of the back plastic fixed 
Now it's fixed. Okay, back up and working. We can see the photos I have taken. Ooh, Matrix style. I didn't know that existed. Let's see what that looks like. Oh. Well, that was uh, very anticlimactic. Anyways, there's a... Uh, the touch screen is very iffy. Sorry. There we go. There's our froggy, as usual. Uh, yeah, the photos are pretty terrible. I can auto-rotate it. No accelerometer. I'm sorry, but what? There's an accelerometer built into this one. There probably was an accelerometer on the iPhone 2Gs, and I just didn't realize, but there you go. Uh, camera. Camera, camera, camera. Now, there is something different with this camera app as opposed to the other ones I've had a look at, because it actually has a digital zoom slider just there. The other ones didn't have that. So this is the first one that's implemented that. Uh, but otherwise, in options... Oh, yeah, with the touch screen, you have to just press the edges of the screen to toggle these two. So if you see me fiddling around with those two, that's why. Uh, image settings, image size is 240 by 320, and image quality is high. But otherwise, it's, as you can see, the menus are very, very primitive looking. And then coming to video, let's see, so you get it, just do it, like, there we go, got it. So I was coming to show you the video recorder, and I opened up multimedia, and I didn't realize... It's all in Chinese. So let me just go back and just open it up the good old fashioned way with rec. And there it is there. And it is 176 by 144 as we have come to know and love. And the video quality is set too high. Okay, with all that being said, I'm gonna splice in the photos and videos that I took with this device and um, enjoy what you're about to see. Testing video on the Cyphone i9 Plus 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 2008 model. It's a considerable downgrade on the previous one. Three frames, four frames, maybe five. I don't know why, but I've started to implement this shot where I just walk. Maybe testing the EIS. That doesn't exist. And then I pan along the wall. Any details? It's not very sunny. It might look a bit bland. Already looks a bit bland. What am I talking about? Okay, I'll do it. He's fine. Sneak peek of lemons. Yeah, they don't really look like lemons, do they? And then ground. No bees today. In a couple of days, all this will be gone. I finally have a gardener coming around to get rid of it all. Which is going to make camera tests a bit hard. Oh well. Here we go, that's without the digital zoom. And there is our three times digital zoom. And a lot of wind. Once again, I think I've commented enough about the photos and videos on this device. You guys can comment about it in the comment section if you want to. But coming to the video player, we can play back, it's in AVI format as well. You can play back the video at its three or four FPS. Maybe five. I don't know, I haven't checked yet. It plays video at 176 by 144, so uh, not much. Uh, QQ is the internet-based service, which obviously we can't do. Uh, voice, okay, it's sound recorder. Fair, all right. Well, let's record a new one, because we always have to record a new one. That's the please recycle one, as we all know. Uh, so what do we say? That's it, I think that's all we need to say. And then we can stop that, save audio, yes. Then we come back to, uh, which one is it? Record sound. Well, obviously it records sound because I wouldn't have been able to do the video test otherwise. Uh, call list. I wonder if there's anything in here. If there is, I'll have to block it out. Uh, no, it's empty. I might have already factory reset this. I think I might have reviewed this on my old channel. I will look and splice in a little um, note here for you guys. I think I might have actually. In time, 
obviously we can set the time and date. The home city's getting close. Set time and date, yeah. Calculator will look like uh, 2G sort of looking old school layout. Fonts are off, that's all good. Let me open up call. Uh, that's <laughs> what the dialer looks like. Yeah, it works, that's good. Um, obviously it's 2G only. Can't test the core quality because it's not 3G compatible when we don't have 2G in Australia. Uh, the phone book, do we really need to bother with the phone book? To be honest, look how laggy it was too, by the way. Uh, network is WAP services. We know what's going on there. And audio player, well, we may as well do the speaker test. Now, I actually did put another song from the Doom Eternal OST on here. I put The Only Thing They Fear Is You, which is like the main sort of theme for Doom Eternal, like BFG Division in Doom 2016. This is sort of the same thing. I want to give it a go just to see what it sounds like. All right. So let's bump it all the way up. That's a very loud plane. What is he doing? Loop de loops around my house. Go away. Seriously? And as they say on the hydraulic press channel, let's see. Very quiet speaker, nothing special yet. So let's try BFG 10K. Ah, oh, yeah, it's still quiet. What the hell happened? Oh, the accelerometer thing where you can shake it around like a madman, it changes. I've got to say though, it is quiet. But it's actually not a half bad speaker, to be honest. I was expecting a lot worse. So we'll try Doomed Hunter because that's got a lot of bass. It's not an overpowered speaker. At full volume, it doesn't sound too bad. Obviously, at 50%, it will sound pretty reasonable, but at 100%, that's actually quite fine, to be honest. So now it's becoming clearer as to why these siphons actually sold. So if we open up settings, dual SIM settings, uh, pen calibration, not going to do that. Uh, phone setup, basic. Security setup, basic. And restore factory settings, nothing special. The last thing on this screen here is Mario in games, and it's Java, so you're going to have to wait, sorry. So FM, we come to FM, please plug in earphone, and now we have the good old earphones that we can use, yeah, plug in the right way, so we just plug them in, uh, I think it's detected them, please plug in earphone. Uh, I have. Okay, that's very strange. Maybe the port on this is dead, but these did work with one of the other phones I did test. Oh, well, FM radio doesn't work. It probably does, but I'm probably doing something wrong, but it just keeps on coming up with plug-in earphone. But all we probably would have heard is a crappy advertisement from one of our radio stations, and we would have just heard static again. So let's move on. Uh, in Bluetooth, we have... Uh, let's see if it's been paired with anything. No, it has not. Uh, user profiles, which has a palm tree background, or sunset background, that'll do. Uh, let's see what the ringtones are on this device. Are they going to be the same? Soldier. Someone has Soldier Boy on here. Well, I believe so anyway. So maybe I didn't factory reset it. I have no idea. It was like three years ago. Ah. Yeah, they're the same. Oh my god. At least you can hear it in all its glory. Wait, I want to hear the one that sounds like hell. Yep, that's the one. It's funny to say this, but they actually sound slightly better on this speaker. So I got to hear them in all their wonderful glory. Oof. 
uh, file manager. Well, we've pretty much already seen this. Two meg internal and free is one meg. And obviously the memory card is 512. But once we tear it down, we'll get to see the guts of this thing and we can decipher what's going on. In map, it will probably want me to... Yes, I don't have to say it. Uh, one iron. What is one iron? Is it one iron? One iron. Well, it's in Chinese. So guess what? We're playing a guessing game here. Uh, let's just click things until it works. Okay, it requires a sim. I understand. Okay, in Wev, it will require a sim, I assume. Yes. Okay, let's check the lottery. Did I win the lottery? No, I did not. Uh, stonks. Okay. <laughs> We're looking good here. Bookshelf, or bookshelf as it should be. It should be an ebook reader. No, but they call it bookshelf anyways. Uh, clean up bookshelf. <laughs> okay, I'll clean up the bookshelf. Bookshelf cleaned. I had no books there to begin with, you silly idiots. Uh, in multi-meh, multi-meh, uh, yeah, so the first one is, okay, so it's something. So the, is the second one, okay, that needs to have data connectivity. Does the third one need it? Third one needs it. Fourth one, that needs it too. Fifth one, that probably needs it too. Let me just make sure, yep, same thing. Uh, I do have the sim in, but obviously it's not active, and that's the same, and that's the same. I think there's one more option. Look at that lag. Oh, English, mobile funny. Oh, options. SC address. Message send failed. SC address. I have a feeling they're all going to be SC address. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know what any of that means. Someone will tell me in the comments. I'm fairly sure of it. Okay, next page. This might actually not go for that long. Uh, in organers, alarm and ward clock. Yep. And, yep, getting close, as I said. Uh, chat. Let's have a look at chat. Another internet service thing. Profile with a SIM card. Oh, yeah, because it's SIM, obviously. Ha. Huh. Uh, voice m something has a cash icon. What could this... Oh, currency. Yep. Should have known. Study d. No dictionary file. Okay, it's a dictionary file. All right. Um... Let's try the, um, let's just not say anything and just click it. Digital repeat? What? Okay, and storage. Okay. I have no idea what that serves, but, um, that's there with that icon. No idea. Don't ask questions. Anyway, security with golf requires a sim. Uh, the next one is... Okay, we've changed OSs again. All right. Hang on. We need to go back. Need to take a step back. Mobile. Okay. It doesn't change OSs, I'm just saying it because it looks like it. But this is all SIM required, as usual. Wait for it to disappear. Click another thing. Yeah, can't do much. As I said, if the government did not shut down 2G in Australia, I could have tested all of these. But no, instead, no. Get rid of that. Don't need that. We've got better things to do in this world. I actually don't think I'll have to dedicate a chunk of this video to the games, because I don't think half of them are going to work, so... Yeah. See? Sim. Uh, media P. Sim. Come on. Magic Sushi has to work. You are the staple of all these clone devices. Are you for real? Maybe it's not Magic Sushi. What about Color S? It just yells at me because of the Sim. Uh, next game. Oh my god! Alright. We will dedicate a chunk of this video to games. Uh, news X. Okay. Let's come to the next page then. Tank. Okay. Game simulator. Alrighty. So we've got one page of games and we've got a couple in Mario's games and then a couple in the other one. Alright, so let's start with Mario then. So Java. Bubble Bobble. I meant Bubble Bobble. Oh, look at that. It doesn't work. Come on, FIFA. You gotta work, man. Playing soccer on a... Maybe it's loading? Something. We want to play soccer on this portion of the screen just here. Come on. I don't know how to play soccer slash football. I was never a sporty person, so... Um, sorry. I wonder what that sprite is of just there. So we are faced with a dilemma. How do we continue on? Maybe if I click down here... Nah, I don't think that's going to work. 
I mean, would you really want to see a game running just there? Uh, we can minimize, pause, and terminate. We're going to terminate that. Moving on. That was quick. To NES games. Alrighty. So, what have we got in here? Oh, there's a open something up there. Can't read what that says. Open Moby, perhaps? So, we've got Metal Armor. Sad, depressed anime character. Um, Streets of Rage sort of looking thing. Uh, some sort of underwater thing. I really can't see what's going on. There's a red plane there. Um, Mario something. Some sort of anime thing. Um, Double Dragon. Power Rangers. Is there another... It's a nest simulator, but okay. So you can't scroll along. So let's try the first one. Start game. We actually have controls. Holy moly. <laughs> Namcot. <laughs> Then they left Namco. Just, yep. Well done, guys. All right. So we want to press... No, that's select. Okay. So we want to press start. All right. Groovy. Here we go. We have NES games on the Siphone. Oh, my God. NES games even lag on this. That's funny. Come on. All right. Now we just shoot. Yeah, there we go. Considering this doesn't even have multi-touch, how are you even going to play NES games on this thing? I mean, at least it has NES games. It's an improvement. All right, let's try the sad, depressed anime character. And that was something with an exclamation mark, so I'm not too sure what that said to me. All right, let's try the next one. All right, I'll try that again. No, nah, okay. Uh, this one? Nope, not found. Uh, this? Not found. Okay, we're looking good. Mario? Not found. Not found. Oh, hello. Minus. Oh, Contra. That was Double Dragon. Okay. Oh, no. My bad. It is Contra. I've mixed it up with Double Dragon. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go. Yep. Cool. Now, Contra is known for holding a direction and shooting at the same time. If you were to do this, you're not only going at like two frames a second, uh, but you would have to stop in an action game, and start shooting. Oh, wait. Jump first. Every single bit of animation you can see. Wow, look at it go. So, like, I want to shoot down, but I can't press down and... Can you see my problem here? See? So what's the point of giving you NES games when you can't even play them? You can play them. It's just very limited as to what you can do. Uh, Power Rangers? shows four different games. I'm confused. Uh, let's try the first one. Zoom. Oh, something. Galaga? No. It's, uh, I just blew up without doing anything. That's completely fair enough. Next one. That's okay on that one. Resume. Oh, that's Contra. Okay. Third one. Ah, uh, oh, can't remember the name of this. Okay, it's Road Fighter. There you go. So I believe A is to accelerate and B is to break. Am I correct? Would I be correct in saying that? Okay, they're gone. Yep. Okay. So now I want to move to the right lane. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Almost got it. There we go. Beautiful. We can keep rolling on. We can keep rolling, 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 keep rolling, 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 and die. That was fun. Next, we have... What do we have next? Oh. And that was the NES games. But that means you could put your own NES games on here and play them, potentially. It brings up the issue of how do you play them? Because the screen will only recognize one input. So unless it's like a puzzle game on the NES where you just tap and stuff, that'd be fine. But anything else, nah, it won't work. I thought I told you to lock every 10 minutes or 5 minutes. Sure, why not? All right, so then we've got... I have a feeling that these are going to be the NES games. Let's try. Tank. Yep. Okay. I see what's going on. Racing is going to be Road Fighter. Yep. I didn't even give that time. Yeah, i just seen it. Hundo is... Contra. Motorcycle is... Oh! 
Excite bike. Ha. Huh. Wow. This will be uh, highly playable considering. I'm moving. I'm moving. <laughs> it's pretty difficult for me to do this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's accelerate over this jump. There we go. Hey, nice. And then the last one here is... What is this? What was this again? Oh, yeah, this thing where you just blow up and die. Yeah, fair. Okay. So, does that mean that's everything? That is everything, isn't it? Okay, I just checked. We don't have Magic Sushi, we don't have Puzzle, we don't have Mahjong. These are the staple of iPhone clones. They've been on every single one. And then, uh -huh. I'm slightly disappointed now. Well, then that means this video shouldn't be that long then, um, because we're done. We've looked at everything. We've went through settings. We've tried ringtones, camera, stop locking. We've tried games, if I haven't already said that. We've had a look at the apps. We've had a look at everything. I guess that's it. This one was not very interesting at all, was it? This one was very boring. I anticipated it to be a lot more interesting, and, well, it wasn't. Is it going to power off? Did I lock it? I think I might have. If you had purchased this back in, you know, 2008 sort of thing instead of getting an actual iPhone, yeah, you could have made calls. Media isn't half bad, music-wise. Camera's pretty terrible. You've got the proprietary 12-pin port. We've pretty much went back in time from the last 3G slash 3GS clones I've had a look at to now this, which is basically a 2G clone with a 3G shell. Um, so, has much changed? Not really from the early 2Gs to this. Those other two 3G and 3GS clones that I had a look at were way more advanced than this thing. Conclusion though, back in 2008, not half bad. I think the best thing about this is the speaker, to be fairly honest. Which, um, yeah, it's not too bad. I've heard much worse over the last couple of weeks. So, I guess that means we just tear it down and then show the specs and... That's, that's it. This video might go for 25 minutes. I doubt it because I filmed an hour of footage. Um, all right, we'll take the SD card out. It's easy doing it like that. Uh, we'll take the SIM card out. Tear this bad boy down. How many screws are holding this together? Well, considering I pulled it apart before, it looks like there's only two. And also, the idea of having a new mouse mat is to not spill anything on it. But as I said, I've got another two, so it's fine. It's all good. Um, yeah, it should just come apart now. I think. I believe I may have broken it because there was clips down here and I didn't even see them so I just ripped the frame off and it's, it's fine, it'll go back together. So we have the motherboard. It's nothing special. There is a manufacturing date up here. Let me remove this tape. There's the motherboard code right there. So I'll have to Google that. We also have the camera right here. I might have to be careful. Actually, why should I be careful? It doesn't matter. I've got another four of the things, so I can interchange the parts if need be. Except for the touch screens, I can't do that. It is a ZC L01 set. Okay. What is this? What is this? So, this is a little piece here that they've decided to solder down to these two contacts here, and it's a little, obviously an antenna, that they haven't taken the 3M tape off the back. Whatever they've soldered here, this obviously some sort of antenna thing, as I said, they just, they didn't take the tape off, they just soldered it straight down and went, yeah, it's close enough. That's um, reasonable workmanship, I would say. Alright, well, um, we've obviously got the touch ribbon just here, so I've got to be careful. Which means I'll just shove the screwdriver underneath and just pull it up and it should be fine. So, I accidentally damaged the LCD. It's alright, I got another four of them, so it's fine. Uh, the reason why I'm taking this completely apart is because there's a code just under here, which gives me a look at the serial number and stuff. Yeah, I've already broken it more than enough. So there's the display code just there, FPC32WN060. But no, there is all the codes just there, which I thought would be very interesting to have a look at. It does say 16MP by the looks of it. Something else there as well. I don't know. If anyone can decipher that, feel free. I think I can see what people have pointed out. Version MAUI, which someone said to me. I can't remember the person that said that to me, but this is the name of the OS that this is running, I believe. So there you go. Uh, that was that was cool to, um, to have a look at. And also the reason why I took this off is because of this here. I have a feeling there's some chips under here that are important. 
this is fine. I'm pretty sure the other ones are exactly the same specs. Uh, so we can just use this one as a basis for a teardown. Um, but I'll just quickly show the uh, frame just here. It feels like steel. It's heavy. It's, but it's not. There's also a code just there as well. I see the number 32 and I think, hmm, I know what's going on there. I would have had to destroy this anyways because I need to take the shielding off. So I don't really have to be as careful with it as I have been with the other ones. You may be also thinking to yourself, Smalls, are you going to just bin this? Are you going to just throw it out? No, I'll keep it. So in the end, I would have had to destroy this anyways in order to see the CPU, etc. Because I would not have been able to get to this point without breaking it. So we have a MediaTek MT6225A CPU. We also have a flash module just here, which is, well, it's got a lot of information on it. I'm going to have to take a photo of this and let you know the code during editing. There's also a MediaTek IC just there as well, which I'll list down in the specs. See? It's back together. It's fine. Uh, let me short the two pins and see if it turns on still. See? It still works. I mean, you can see what's going on. But the touch doesn't work. The home button doesn't work. Nothing works. But, uh, it was all in the name of science, I swear. See? You wouldn't even notice that I took it apart. Wouldn't even notice. See? All good. Okay, well, since I haven't looked up the specifications of anything yet, I'll just put it over to the side and splice it all in later for you all to have a look at and have a read of and all that sort of stuff, but I have a feeling it's pretty bare bones, pretty basic, nothing special, but I would say that this one is done. I've killed it. It is no longer worth anything. Not that it was worth anything in the first place, but you got to see the insides of it, and then I'm happy with it. All right, well, that is going to do it for the Siphone i9++ 2008 review slash showcase slash thing and altogether the ninth part in the iPhone clone month. So I hope you got some sort of enjoyment or kick out of this. Even though it wasn't a full-on funny clone or whatever, I've still had a look at it. It's part of this series and I can now just put it away and just leave it. That's fine. I've had a look at it. I've done what I need to do to it as it wasn't that much of an exciting video. That's what I'm trying to say. Stay tuned, as I will be uploading the rest of the parts over the next coming weeks, uh, hopefully by the end of the 23rd of May. That's my deadline. Uh, I've got like 10 left, I think. Maybe 11? I'm not too sure. But yeah, if I missed anything, let me know down in the comments below. I think I'm going to leave it for here, so thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Take care, be good people, stay safe, and I'll catch you all in the next video. You can just go over here. There you go. You're in your new home now. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.